So this part in the campaign has been, I think, a little bit more entertaining than the previous AI-only EU4 battle because there's both big wars going on as well as awesome colonization that's always changing the borders of the map. And if you guys have been watching me for a long time and you know me, you know that whenever I watch the AI play in any of these games, EU4, Civ 5, whatever it may be, those are my two favorite things. Uh, my two favorite things are war and colonization. And we didn't see colonization in the present day mod, obviously because all the land was filled out. But man, this has been so much fun to watch the AI just colonize by themselves and, and pick up new land, especially Africa. You know, that's what I was thinking about over the break. I was thinking... This, this campaign is interesting compared to the, the previous present day mod because regions of the map, I think, that I found not that interesting in the present day mod AI only battle uh, are way more interesting this time around. More like, like, for instance, Europe was like a huge focus in the present day mod. And at this point, like, we don't even care about Europe. We have not focused on Europe at all. I think I find the continent of Africa extremely entertaining. Uh, North America is just so, it's such a cluster here. There's so much going on, and, uh, you know, North America was absolutely just nothing. In the present day mod, nothing was happening. It was so disappointing. I had no idea that the USA, Canadian, and Mexican uh, AIs were not going to go at it. Mex you know, the USA and Canada were just going to stay allied uh, in the present day mod, you know, forever. That just sucked. That sucks so bad. We've got some really interesting diplomatic effects right here. Um, look at this. No one's rivaled Canada, but Canada's rivaled the USA, Revolutionary France, and Russia. Uh, what about Mexico? Let's see what Mexico has. So uh, they Mexico and the U.S. don't like each other. Great Britain and Mexico don't like each other. And then Russian. The Russians also. Uh, they were enemies or, or something like that. Russia is continuing to colonize, and they're going to grab this final pro. Actually, who knows who's going to grab this final province? More than likely, it will be Russia's colony. They might even reach down into further into California, possibly. The British Columbians will probably also uh, colonize around the Shoshone and stuff like that. I, I actually wouldn't be surprised if the Shoshone get taken out at some point. Mexico, not really worried about the northern parts. They're not really colonizing or anything like that, but they're also... I mean, are they friends with the UPCA or something? They're not. Mexico has got no alliances. Um, I, at least as of now, but that opinion is going higher and higher between Canada and Mexico. That alliance right there is really going to make things tough for all the other nations in the region. Um, you know, South America was, South America is just as entertaining, but there's just been so many other continents that have been so fun to watch that we haven't really focused too much on South America. Uh, the Ottomans, I absolutely love, especially these big old Ottoman Russian wars. They've been so fun to view. Um, so it looks like Yemen, the Egyptians are, uh, yeah, the Egyptians are completely ha handling Yemen, whereas the Ottomans are focusing in on dealing with the Russians who are attacking from the, uh, the Caucasus Mountains, which uh, they're kind of retreating somewhat. Brazil has sent over a 19th stack to help out the Ottomans. For some reason, people love the Ottomans in this mod, which is strange because I always thought that, I'm not sure if this is accurate, but I I'm not, sh well, for sure the, the Europeans weren't too happy with the Ottomans, I believe. But maybe things, I know that with time, uh, you know, relationships got better. But uh, I, I'm pretty sure I thought a lot of the, at least, you know, outside the Middle East, the Europeans didn't like the Ottomans, uh, which is very strange in this timeline because they've, a lot, I mean, the Ottomans have so many alliances, whereas a lot of other nations don't. You, we're not seeing that many alliances. Oh, Austria does, though. Uh, Prussia's got some alliances. Oh, they've got an alliance with both Denmark and Sweden. Maybe the, Revol oh, maybe the... Alliances are starting to build back up. Oh, Portugal and Spain are, uh, are now allied. That's a big deal. Portugal got out of their war with the Netherlands. I'm wondering if they lost anything. Let's go ahead and view, on, view that because Portugal was getting their butt kicked. And they, they called that war themselves. Uh, maybe at the very least, they might have lost their territory here. Yes, they did. They had one colony um, in East Timor and they lost that. But that is it. Is this Revolutionary France? Okay, Revolutionary France is also going for some of this stuff, too. Uh, is it the British? Yes, it is. The British there. Spain still with the colony just south of the Philippines. Uh, like I said, J Japan has almost united their island. Pretty much have. They will lose this colony if they haven't already. Did they? No, they haven't lost the colony just yet. All right, let's go and double check on the wars. Like I said, the Portuguese-Dutch uh, War has ended. Yemen is not going to win their war for independence over the Ottomans. They're at negative 16 war score. The Peru and Argentinian war is still going on, but there doesn't seem to be too. It doesn't seem to be too one-sided. The Argentina is going to Argentina is going to probably push back Peru once again. It's going to be a back and forth. Nothing too big of a deal. Uh, I do know that Naj is at war with the UAE. Uh, it's a nationalist war. 
The UAE is actually getting their butt kicked, and I don't know how, but it looks like they gained a whole bunch of land. Did they gain a whole bunch of land? I thought they only were at like three provinces. Now they, uh, actually, I don't know. I might be, that might be the crack. I, I, I have no idea. Oh, now they're starting to push forward. I don't know if, see all this land, this, in the Arabian Peninsula, it's all desert. Uh, so there's no terrain modifiers, nothing like that. I mean, really numbers and, and, and generals are incredibly important to every battle within this uh, location. So that's something I kind of take note of. It's all about numbers and, and I guess your general. They both have a one-star general, so I can't see it helping them out too much. It seems like Naj is going to have the advantage since they have 11,000 men over 9,000 men. Uh, I think that will probably make a big difference. Uh, anyways, let's keep going. We have the British Pacific now after the Netherlands. Uh, pretty much they're, tr they're trying to take back the their New Zealand lands. British Columbia now is at 17 war score. We've got Bolivia and Argentina, so Argentina seems to not be doing so well. Tuscany and Sardinia Piedmont. We should keep an eye on that. Again, like I said, I mean, Europe has been such kind of such very out of focus. Tuscany obviously going to uh, win this battle over Sardinia Piedmont, and uh, we are starting to see a very interesting northern Italian nation start to pull away here. So this has been incredible to watch the Ottomans face both the Russians and Yemen to the south while also fighting uh, these massive rebels that have been, been popping up. We've got Greek separatists popping up a 40 stack. And now the Russians are really starting to move down, down south. Uh, now what else, what are the Egyptians up to? The Egyptians have kind of just been keeping Yemen distracted. I don't know if the Ottomans have enough to stop this. Where are the Ottomans? Are they further into Russian territory? No. Did the Prussians peace out? Yes. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait a second. Oh, the Russians are done. The war's over. Oh, okay. The war's over. Wow, you got lucky. The war just ended, like right now. That looked like it was going to start to swing back for the uh, Yemen and Russian side, but I guess not. Anyways, that war is over. They've kept a hold there. Canada's still going after Native Americans. Um, we've got Chile, Norway. Nothing's been going on there. Uh, some of the wars with the British Indians as uh, against some of the other Indian nations have ended. Not all of them. There's still a few still remaining. Uh, who is this that they're going after? Okay, so there's going to be a very interesting uh, kind of struggle for power in the subcontinent of India. Bolivia, Blackfoot, so some of the natives kind of going after each other. Netherlands are getting involved in, in a ton of wars. They are really starting to get kind of spread a little bit thin here. Wow, look at British India. Almost non-existent, almost. Uh, obviously, they still have quite a bit somewhat. It's kind of spread out now, but man, I mean, this they lost a ton. And they're still losing a lot more. Uh Punjab also took over a smaller nation to the north here quite easily. So, again, like I said, I mean, this seems to be the nation that will probably dominate the region. That is unless Qing gets involved. If Qing gets involved, I mean, they could probably just wipe through everything here. I don't think the AI has that desire, though. Yeah, they don't hate them. They don't hate them. I'm so surprised that they've stayed so quiet. Qing has just not, not done anything. Very isolated. Um, so yeah, this is what they want. The the British Pacific wants this Netherland province, which would give them full control. Oh, they still have to go after Great Britain at some point, and they, they will, more than likely. Uh, Australia doesn't seem to be colonizing at all, so that's not good. But I'm sure Australia and the British Pacific will work together whenever they fight their war for the British, for the British uh, territory. Is there anything else going on? Any new, new colonization? Hey, the UAE seem to be having some small success. Oh, no, they're not. No, never mind. Well, let's see if they win this. Again, like I said, it's okay for them to attack. This is all the desert. Ooh, they are going to win that. How'd they win that? So it must have been dice rolls. Yeah, maybe they got some really good rolls there. It looks like that had to have been it because they don't, they don't really have a clear advantage. I didn't see a clear advantage in terms of pips and their leaders, but uh, well, still, that's shocking. Egypt spreading out further uh, into the Sahara with this new colony. Now that the war is over, uh, the Egyptians can focus back on colonization in Africa. They've got, oh man, now who are they supported by? By Russia. So Russia really does not like the Ottomans. So this is where, if we're going to see a lot of strength fall from, from, from the Ottomans, this is when it's going to happen. The Egyptians are at 100% liberty desire. I'm not sure if it's going to stay like that. And just because we see 100% doesn't mean it's guaranteed the AI will for sure break, way, break away right now. Also, can the Russians do that? They're in a truce with the Ottomans. 
They are with it. Yeah, I don't know if they can do that per se. I guess unless they'd be breaking the truce, which you really do not want to do. But I, I, I don't know. Uh, so the Ottomans have are dealing with the uh, they're they're dealing with this huge stack of Greek separatists. Uh, it does seem like the Ottomans are low on in terms of regiments. Definitely very low. The UAE are going to win another battle, so they might take some land away from Naj. And they are being supported somewhat. I'm not, they're not really being supported in their war efforts, or efforts but they are allied to the Persians, uh, which is a big alliance for the Persians to pick up. How much does... Okay, so Persia hates the Ottomans and Punjab. I don't know why the Persians have not allied to the, uh, to the Russians. That'd be a perfect choice in this scenario. Okay, so I think it's really likely that we might see the Ottomans lose quite a bit of their strength. A lot of it, actually. But again, I don't know if the Egyptians are going to be forced to wait until the Russians have that truce ended. Or, I don't know, 1866, that'd be another five years. It's not that bad, uh, but by that point, you know, obviously the Ottomans are going to be somewhat back. Wait a second, is this now? Yeah, this Montenegro's, I think, always been uh, separated from the Ottoman Empire. I, I believe. I'm not 100% about that, though. Anything else that's going on? Some rebels. Uh, looks like these this native tribe lost uh, a bit of land to Noop, because I did see rebels popping up over the break. Danish Congo. Very cool. There we go, the Danish Congo. Portugal, Belgium going after these lands. I mean, man, this is, this is pretty cool. Let's go and check in on wars. There's probably been a few big wars that we're maybe missing. Uh, British are only in one more native war in uh, India. Mm, nothing too big that's currently happening. No, actually, there's no there's no big war so far. Don't know how the British Pacific are losing their war against the Netherlands. Maybe it's like just kind of a, a numbers game. Blackfoot is successful, and uh, the natives the north the the natives of North America are kind of going at it. Whoa, 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 whoa! What happened here? Wait a second. Look at Peru. Whoa, what the... What? What? Look at this. Look at all the land they grabbed away. And this is actually... I love the new regional uh, naming system. Oh, I absolutely love that uh, paradox. That is so cool that they included that. So we have... Uh, Prov what is that? Peruvian? Peru that doesn't say Peruvian. But we have La Plata that uh, Peru controls. I don't know if this is going to last for very long, though. So have they been colonizing this region or... No, no. So I think they have. They've been colonizing this region to be one of her cores. Oh, no, never mind. It, I think Argentina has been colonizing this region. And during that war between Peru and Argentina, when they peaced out, they just asked for a bunch of that stuff. Don't know why they asked for this stuff on the uh, Atlantic coast. But nonetheless, Peru is looking strong once again. It's crazy how Peru's been powerful. I mean, Argentina looks like, looks like they're going to be in a tough spot. They probably will not make it. Chile is still at war with Norway. Uh, no big developments there. In terms of colonization, have we seen anything new? Russia has not grabbed this final piece of land. And ooh, and we have Mexico back in colonizing. Yep, they are back to colonizing. Not sure where they... Oh, is this... Oh, is that... No, that's not a colony. That was a war. Mexico was at in a very quick war. And actually, this has stopped... Uh, the, the Americans can no longer reach down into, what is this, like Utah territory, kind of the four corners, um, because now Mexico controls this land. Unless, of course, the Americans move through Cheyenne, maybe through Blackfoot, then they can maybe try to grab a few provinces, but I believe by that point, the British Columbia, maybe even Mexico, will have had full control over this uh, location. Now, I think Mexico is just focusing in on maybe colonizing, going after the natives of the north, and then they might go back and do their old strategy of attacking Central America to South America and uh, progressing from there. At that point, we'll have a super strong Mexico. The alliance still has not formed between Canada and Mexico, so uh, something to keep in mind. Yeah, definitely something to keep in mind. Mm, anything else? Let's go and double-check on some wars. Don't want to miss any. Portugal versus... Jolof, yeah, I believe that is an African tribe. We still have, let's, we should probably double check on the British, see how they're doing in their wars. Not too well, and again, I mean, the British AI just hasn't been, I don't know if they've been sending over regiments, or if it just hasn't been enough. Okay, so they just pieced out. They didn't look like they lost that much. 
Uh, I don't think they really lost that much. Actually, did they even gang some land back? The south? I don't know. But, um, again, it, it, it seems like it's just slowly chipping away. Slowly, these, these uh, nations of India slowly chipping away at, at British uh, Bengal. Actually, is it different now? Is each Oh, yeah, each location is different. It's no longer just British India, except for this part, I guess, um, because they're all kind of separated into different regions now. Hmm. That's interesting. Oh, they have a uh, vassal up north, which could mean... Is that a vassal? Uh, which, which could definitely mean that we, we could see maybe... Perhaps Punjab getting into it with the British, maybe. Is that a, is that a vassal? It, it it doesn't say, but that is the color that is designated for vassals. It doesn't yeah. So like it, it, here it says Egypt is a vassal of the Ottomans, but when I go to British, the British, it doesn't say that. I don't know. I don't know what that is. I mean, does it say anything here? Oh, you're a protectorate of Great Britain. I wonder why it doesn't say that in the toolbar. Hmm. Well, anyways, they're a protectorate. Still, that could definitely bring uh, Punjab into a war with the British. It's possible. UAE still going after Naj, but I think they might be able to get the job done. Oh, the Ottomans are not doing good. We might see the breaking of the Ottomans, or at least the fall of the Ottomans, start to happen. 1866. Not exactly sure when that happened in real life. Uh, I don't think it... I know that they started losing a considerable amount of strength in the late 19th century, but uh, I don't know if it's about this early. 1863 seems to be a little bit early, because they might lose Egypt, which would be a, a big chunk of their land. I know that they made it to at least World War I, and then and then things got, got a little bit, little bit uh, dicey there. Where did... Uh, wait a second. Are you serious? Did Tuscany let Sardinia Piedmont go? It looks like they did. They did not take them out. Wow. Well, there you go. Okay, so some some news, uh, some new wars brought uh, definitely popped up. Tunisia versus Naples. Ooh, ooh. So here we go. Finally, we have the Ottomans dealing with uh, foreign uh, European affairs. I should say. Oh, and the Ottomans are going to dominate this. I think they will. The, the good thing about this also for the Ottomans is that this is going to delay the Egyptian independence. I think they had to wait for Russia, anyways. It seems like I might have been right. They have to wait for the truce with Russia to end, or else Russia will not join, uh, because obviously there is a truce. The truce ends 1866, so the Ottomans need to try to gain as much power as they can over the next three years. Because if they don't, then they will... And I don't think they will gain enough power. There's no way. Uh, is Yemen... So they'll more than likely have at least Yemen on their side, it looks like. Darfur might be a distraction for Egypt. So Yemen and Darfur might be a di distraction so the Ottomans can deal with the Russians. The thing is, though, if they don't deal with whatever rebel issues they're having, reactionaries, separatists, uh, they're not going to have a good time. Algerian separatists, ooh. So the Russians cannot, or I'm sorry, the revolutionary France is not going to be able to deal with uh, these massive Algerian separatists. 56 stack. I'm not sure exactly if, well, yeah, they're going to be westernized because I don't know why I thought they, they wouldn't be. Anyways, guys, I'm going to stop right there. Ooh, someone's also going after Timbuktu, this nation to the south. Yes, and they're not having uh, Timbuktu. It looks like they might get eaten here. Anyways, guys, I'm going to stop right there. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.